What you're seeing that footage is uh, hundreds of mourners uh, mourning the death of a seven year old Palestinian boy, Ryan Suleiman. And uh, what you saw in that footage happened uh, more than a few days ago. The update that you need to know about is that uh, the Israeli military has looked into the death of Ryan and uh, they have cleared themselves of any responsibility. Really? Um, they say that despite the fact that he ran away from them, uh, was chased by them and then collapsed, had cardi cardiac arrest and died as a result. Uh, it wasn't their fault, they didn't do anything wrong. And we're gonna give you the details. Uh, first of all, the boy's parents allege he was chased by Israeli soldiers on his way home from school and then he collapsed when troops appeared at his home. Um, they say he fell unconscious after troops interrogated his father and threatened him and his brothers with arrest, clearly terrifying him. Uh, doctors who treated the boy said a preliminary examination showed he experienced cardiac arrest induced by what could be described as a severe panic attack. Um, there apparently uh, was an autopsy done by uh, the Palestinian hospital that has not yet been released. But as of yesterday, Israel's investigation has now been closed. They denied any violence in the encounter uh, between the soldiers and the boy's family saying that the soldiers acted as expected of them while adhering to the army's values. They mean one thing when they say that I agree, but probably meaning something quite different. What do you all think about this? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of the Israeli military clearing itself, it's a joke. Let's move on, right? Only uh, credulous, ridiculous reporters in DC would take that seriously. Um, and and it doesn't apply just to Israel, it applies to any country. Uh, the US military has cleared itself of bombing a wedding. Uh, that has actually literally happened before. Uh, the Russian military has cleared itself of needlessly invading Ukraine and killing thousands of civilians. Really? Oh, wow. Let's report that as if it's true. Okay, so, so of course that's nonsense. That's the easy part. Look, guys, uh, I called Israel, uh, Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip a lot of things. Uh, but I have not often referred to it as an apartheid state. That was a mistake. Um, it's definitely an apartheid state. And if you don't think it is, you're kidding yourself. They're, uh, they completely control those folks' lives. And so if there's a seven year old kid that does something that they don't like, their military hunts that kid down. And the, the Palestinians do not control their own lives, they do not control their own government. The Israeli military does. So why are they not? able to control themselves because it's an apartheid state. There's a different rules and laws, very literally, for Israelis and for Palestinians in the occupied territories. So they say, oh, well, there's a couple of Palestinians that live in Israel, you know, oh, it's whatever percentage. Really, are they in charge? Are they making the rules? They're not making any rules. They're not remotely anywhere near power. No, but even if even so, right? You say, okay, whatever, whoever the Israeli citizens are, do they live under different laws than the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip? Of course they do. I mean, it's not even close. And what are those laws? It's an it's a brutal military occupation. There's no question about that. In fact, the Israelis have killed 100 Palestinians recently. Uh, why? They said, oh, because the Palestinians have done some violence in Israel. Okay, right. So then, what do the Israelis do? Violence back. Actually, a lot more violence back. But what does Western media tell you all the time? No, the state violence doesn't count. When America invades Iraq, that's not terrorism. But wait a minute, we killed hundreds of thousands of civilians. No, not terrorism. The state is allowed to do any violence it likes, right? So when Israel does violence in the occupation, they say, no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. No, it does count. It does count. In fact, it's worse because it is a state saying, we are going to methodically oppress and imprison these people. And we're going to do it based on the fact that we think they can't govern themselves. A deeply racist ideology. So let's just call it what it is. So in this case, they literally scared a Palestinian kid to death. So has Israel's military killed children before? Yes. Uh, have they killed them more directly? Yes, right? But it is symbolic. Like the, the, the Palestinians are being oppressed and, and, and like again, literally scared to death of the brutal military occupation of Israel. If that fact makes you uncomfortable, you should try to change it. But you can't pretend that it's not a fact because it's definitely a fact. Rayvon. 
Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it, right? The anytime Israel attacks Palestine, it's always framed in the media as self defense. You know, a child throws a Palestinian child throws a rock at a fence and the IDF bombs a building. And that's self defense somehow in the eyes of the media. It's ridiculous. But am I surprised to hear that the IDF has cleared itself from wrongdoing in the death of the seven year old? No, not at all. I think that there is no no act of atrocity that they could commit that they wouldn't somehow find a way to justify. They have killed upwards of 200 people in a single weekend by relentlessly bombing Gaza. They bombed and targeted and bombed the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, an organization which provides direct services to children who desperately need those services. They've targeted hospitals. Um, you know, they murdered a journalist, Shireen, more probably more than one journalist, but uh, in recently Shireen, and then they attacked the grieving people at her funeral. It's horrifying, and simultaneously, there is this coordinated PR campaign going on to smear anyone who criticizes uh, the IDF, the Israeli government, as anti-Semitic. It's happening not just in right wing media in the United States, it's happening on CNN, it's happening on MSNBC for the love of God, it's happening within the Democratic Party. We see it happen to Rashida Tlaib, to Ilhan Omar. They tried to frame Bernie Sanders as anti Semitic for criticizing Israel. He's Jewish and most of his family died in the Holocaust. I mean, there's just no ends to which it seems they won't go to justify this. And you're right to say it, Jenk, apartheid. And when the Amnesty International came out with their really damning report about the apartheid in Israel, of course they were attacked as anti-Semitic. It's it's you know it's twofold. It's the violence there, and then this PR campaign to make sure that the voices criticizing Israel and standing up for Palestine are silenced or you know slandered. Yeah, I'm gonna double down on that. So first of all, is there real anti-Semitism? Absolutely, in fact, it's raging in America right now. So when you ask the right wingers who's ultimately responsible for all of these things, including the drinking the blood of children, they say, a lot of them say the Jews. So anti-Semitism is on the rise and it is something that is really scary here and abroad, right? But is this anti-Semitism? No, in fact, what it is is it's Israel's right wing saying, hey, even though we're obviously being racist towards the Palestinians, we're saying they're incapable as human beings of peacefully governing themselves. They're animals. They're animals who can't control themselves, and they have to be. And we have to shove violence down their throat and imprison them for 56 more years. We're obviously the racist ones. But what we'll do is, in the middle of rising anti-Semitism, we'll use fake anti-Semitism charges to try to protect our racist policies. It is the most disgusting and counterproductive thing they could possibly do. And if they want to come at me with like, "Oh, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say th things that are true. We're allowed to smear people and we're allowed to imprison people for 56 years based on a deeply racist ideology, but you're not allowed to counter us." Well, sad day for you. I am and I just did. So kiss my ass. And by the way, free the Palestinians. Free them. It is deeply deeply immoral to keep uh, and the idea to keep them in prison and the idea they say, oh, well, well, the Palestinians, some of them potentially say that we shouldn't have a state. No, you're saying they shouldn't have a state because of your racist ideology. So go ahead, call anyone, any names you like. But the reality is you're a thousand times worse if you're a right wing Israeli who says that we should imprison those poor people based on their race and their religion. Own it, understand it and be honest about it and stop brutalizing the kids of Palestinians, it's disgusting.